Hey, welcome everybody to another rendition of the Lone Wolf Show. And today we are going to visit a situation, a topic that I gave my New Year's, what is it called? Like a, a resolution? New Year's resolution? What was your New Year's resolution? Uh, our guest, Lady Crow Moon, in the building, founder of the Crow, uh, Glenn yeah. Pagan Services, uh, an advocate for pagan prisoners. Hence the show tonight, all about the pagan prisoner. I know all about it. Uh, <laughs> what was your New Year's resolution? Lady? I have none. I'm too old to do that anymore. <laughs> okay. So, so you didn't have one. What about you, Patricia? Did you have one New Year's resolution? Yes, to pay attention more to the animals and the trees and everything around me, what it's trying to tell me. And mine was to work more extensively with pagans that are incarcerated. Yes. And that was mine. <clears throat> uh, and and part of that is has a lot to do with our current guest, Lady Crow Moon. How long have you been corresponding with prisoners or inmates that are a bit pagan? A bit pagan. Um, since I think 2011 was when I first started this. Cool. Um, yeah. For how did it how did, how did it start off? How did you get involved in that? Did a well, relative did somebody you know go to jail? It was just well, as far as I knew, my whole life I'd never met anybody who even been arrested. But when I got in uh, started going around this upstate South Carolina community, there were some people who I I found out who had been in prison, not just jail prison, and uh I adored them. And then I met a lady who'd been in prison in South Carolina and she told me how much they needed some kind of support for pagans, uh, incarcerated pagans. And this is how it got started. So you write incarcerated pagans in the Carolinas? All over. I have, uh, I'm in touch with chaplains and inmates in 37 states now chaplains and inmates and you, you get a hold of the chaplains is there a reason why you you correspond with the chaplains too because um i can't afford to mail my newsletters i send out sabbath newsletters for every sabbath and i can't afford to mail them so i have to email them to chaplains and let them distribute them now if a an inmate writes to us writes to me actually it's just me <laughs> Um, writes to me, then um, if they want research or something, I do what I can. Uh, I have some articles that I send to a lot of them from uh, one from Damien Eccles, if you've heard of him. Have you ever not heard of him? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, information on working with energy and meditation exercise. I also have a condensed version of my Wicca Basics book for inmates. And I will send them that. I can only send five pages per letter. So I had to condense it down. So you've published a book targeted for the pagan, uh, the prison population? It's the, it's, I call it the Crow Glen tradition because it's just my tradition and um, what I think about things. And I tell them in the book that this is not the only way, but it might be a good start for them. Um, I, I do believe that if people want to um, study Wicca, give them some basics. And what I love about Wicca is it gives me the freedom for me to research and make my own opinions about how things are working. And, and I would like them to have that kind of freedom, too. What do um, pagan prisoners typically write to you in their introductory letter? Uh, usually they say my chaplain's not helping me. I can't, I don't have anything. I don't have books. Can I have books? Can I have research? I cannot send them books very often. Um, I do have DVDs that I made that are kind of like my Wicca 101 on DVD. And um, I give them what I can. I contact their chaplain. Sometimes it's really hard they don't answer my my messages, but right. I do have some chaplains who uh, contact me now. They say they want something for their pagan inmates. Mm -hmm. So you said you you have DVDs. Is that something you created, or is it just? Oh yeah, yeah. Everything I've created everything except 
the two of the articles that I send out, one by Damien Eccles, who was um, a Tennessee, I think he was um, incarcerated for murder and had, was in jail for mur uh, prison for nine years. And then they found out he was he was innocent and he was let go. But he used he says magic to me. It's it's meditation to um, survive what he went through. So I'm a big proponent of meditation in prisons. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a good time, good place to do it. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. And, and uh, those cells are just like caves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those cells are just like caves. A lot, of, a lot of change and a lot of inner work can be done at, in those places, believe it or not. Yes, um, I do. Because um, uh, one of the, the gentlemen that I told you about that was is in my community uh, uh, said that he was in lockup for 63 days. And he spent that time just reassessing his entire life. And um, he's just, he's a magnificent person. I, I love him dearly. So, yeah. How did, how'd you get such a good, uh, a broad outreach with 37 different states? Did Was there an advertisement thing going on or was it word of mouth or, or was it just this no, guy tells that guy? Um, I, I was only doing South Carolina, SCDC. And I met a lady who has uh, had information uh, that she sent all over the country. I think she she got me in touch with 25 different states. And since then, I've grown either through inmates uh, finding out about me or chaplains finding out about me. Or Crow Glenn, I should say. <laughs> um, I'm an ex-prisoner myself. That's part of my story. Uh, and... I, I really enjoy the fact that you're out here doing that work. There's not a lot of pagans uh, in modern time, I think, putting too much focus on pagan prisoners. Yep. I think that as, uh, you know, from being around, uh, you know, as a free man, you know, in our craft communities, pagan communities, mm -hmm. I see a lot more consumerist values going on than there is actual work in spiritualism to try to help the broken and, and heal the damaged. Um, yes. And uh, there's only a, a few pagan uh, leaders that I can remember off the top of my head that work with outside, uh, I mean, work with prisoners. What what um, pagans in modern time do you know of or organizations do you know of that work with prisoners besides yourself? Uh, Selena Fox has a group that they do work with um Pagan inmates, um, Maka Nightmare, okay. also in California. Right. Uh, is Selena's is Selena's outreach specifically for Wisconsin, or, or or do you know? No, they're actually. I think the group is that that is doing it. Uh, I think is in uh, like the New York area. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also um, Maka Nightmare has started up a group that we're trying to uh, get off the ground. It's called Hematite. And there are several well-known um, uh, pagans, uh, Druids and uh, Wiccans, I think some heathens, that um, we're trying to get information, references of uh, information for inmates. We're still working on it. It's a huge project, but uh, we're still working on it. I think right. I, I wish I could remember the names. Uh, there's some well-known druids, but you know I have a a, a bad uh, memory. <laughs> certainly, so. it certainly doesn't surprise me that um, Selena's works with prisoners. When right. they had her, her Circle Sanctuary News. There was uh, a catalog for, you know, accessible books like uh, a lot of, you know, the Scott Cunningham Solitary Practitioner right. stuff like that. And yeah. it was always pretty easily, and I think it was actually a discount for prisoners. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's uh, actually that book is Enchanted Encumbered, one of the books. There are two books that I know of. And of course, I don't have the information here. Um, two books that I know of that are written specifically for 
inmates. And um, I'm going to try to find it right now if I can. Have um, you helped? Have you helped prisoners um, obtain books on the craft? Uh, I have uh, either. I very rarely have a book that I can donate uh, of mm -hmm. one of my books. I did at our Carolina Pagan Fest last year. Um, I did get some books to donate and I sent them to um, one group of inmates that the chaplain was asking for books. Even, but not all the books I get donated are, um, I think, good for inmates. So I only right. send the ones that I think will will work them. I, I'm not going to send any Alistair Crowley stuff. Just my right. my opinion. <laughs> um, sure. Well, when it when it comes to institutions that are accepting the books, the biggest hurdle uh, that pagans or Wiccans from the outside sending it to into the inside is security risks. And they're always yes, going to yes. say it's a security risk. Yes. We all know and love Big Blue, which is Raymond Buckland's Big Blue book there. Yes. Oh, you um, can't. And, it and has nudity in it. it well, it has, a, a, so yeah. it has small increments of nudity. It also has um, some homebrew that you can make uh, some dandelion wine from with recipes within the book. And, and, it's, and it's, you know, it, it exactly, shush. Um, <laughs> it, all those, these books do, are in circulation in the penal institutions in America. Some institutions will flag it because of those reasons. And, and you know, someone that's been in the system since, you know, late nineties and, you know, breaking the change of recidivism. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen these books come, you know, come in and out and the different disgruntlements or arguments, you know, with the administration and, you know, let's face it early nineties, 2000, you know, just, they're, they're looking for any reason to disavow the books, to, to push back the books, looking for any reason. Yes, that's why I have to. I need to create some kind of relationship with the chaplain mm -hmm. because right. they will allow things in. They will allow me to send things to the chaplain, and then I put attention and then the inmates' uh, name and number on the outside, so they'll know who it goes to. Yeah, um, <coughs> absolutely, absolutely, I get it. And right. if we look at some of the Judaic literature, like um, some photography of Adam and Eve with the, their nakedness there. And then you implement a tarot card. You know, there's different tarot cards with nudity in it. I've seen tarot cards uh, pushed back because of nudity. Now, what's the difference? Now, there's, and, and that's when it gets into like, um, you know, civil rights. I, I mean, equal equal rights. You can do for this tradition of religious tradition. You should be able to do for this religious tradition. True. Equal right. That, that doesn't exist. It really yeah, and it doesn't. And it doesn't seem like. That and I think that the the Inquisition and I'm not a conspiracy conspiracy theorist or nothing like that, but the Inquisition, um, the burning times, um, the discrimination still goes on in our penal institutions. That is the still the shitholes of the society, and this is where the discrimination towards the men, towards the women, towards the um, uh, folks that um, you know, no gender folks, you know, to be respectful. Um, now, I'm going to say I do have some chaplains that are very respectful and want everything that I can help the inmates with. Um, but we still do have uh, chaplains uh, that don't care and don't support them at all. Mm -hmm. and that's where that's I come sad. in with my charm. <laughs> Try to get them to, to allow things in. Have um, you ever physically went inside of a prison? And to facilitate a group study or, or, or a ritual. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. That's really fascinating. Did you have a lot, a lot of bull crap getting in? In did they give you a hard time? Did, was it an easy uh, they were situation? Only the chaplains who trusted me. <coughs> um, <Right>. Yeah. <coughs> me. And uh, so, um, I don't visit any. Um, I only visit two prisons now and one's not a prison one is a mental health facility for sexual offenders in mm -hmm. Columbia South Carolina um so uh I forgot where I was going with that <laughs> but yeah I I only do that with chaplains who trust me and that's why I need to, to create a relationship with the chaplains 
right um what do you think the the most hardship you have as far as states goes when you're working with um, inmates prisoners what what states seem to be the hardest to work with uh right now believe it or not it's new jersey i'm trying to get into new jersey and um, what underlying factors have making new jersey they difficult? just ignore me you're they ignoring. Just ignore me yeah yeah okay. um We've had problems with Arizona in the past, but I'm now in Arizona and the chaplain there is asking me to send information to all the chaplains in Arizona. So that's fantastic. Once uh, the what I my documents that I create have a. uh, First say, you know, this we're not here to do witchy woo magic. We're here to grow spiritually because for me, that's the most important part, most important aspect of Wicca for me. And that's what I hope to help the inmates do. So it's about spirituality, understanding. I always have a little blurb in there about uh, the pinnacle and show the pinnacle in churches and in um, uh, air off of side of airplanes and police officers and explain what it is. So I explain enough to where I think they trust that I'm not there trying to make them um, do spell work on everybody and mesmerize everybody into some zombie-like existence. I don't know. I don't know what they think uh, witches do, but (laughs) it's not that. (laughs) Um, The earliest correspondence that I can remember as a prisoner myself was um, taking correspondence courses from Gavin and Yvonne Frost from the church and school of Wicca. And that was the first correspondence that I had. And it was like a hundred dollars a course. Um, That, that was the first that I can remember. Long time Um, ago. Right. I think, I think that the Frosts very well could have been one of the first, uh, folks to reach out to incarcerated pagans. I want to say one of the, because, you know, I'm, I don't know for sure, but I know from experience, that was one of the first that I saw. Another group that worked with prisoners from my experience was uh, the Millennial Kingdom out of Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Okay, um, Are they still and, around? And they are unfortunately not. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was That's run what by- happens. That's what right, happens. Right. Louise Ain Salen uh, ran that. Um, and then you also had Paul Barrow, um, who just passed over to the Summerlands, and he is a Lothlorian, and he did correspondence course with prisoners. And I was involved with that uh, program. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. You, you mentioned uh, Selena Fox. And also um, um, Cherry Hill Seminary, if you heard of that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, they had some uh, rituals written up before anybody was accepting pagan. I'm rewriting those and uh, they're going to be delivered through hematite. So with, that's really cool. With, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. I also know that there's another pagan leader in our community that worked with um, inmates in California. And I believed was, and came up with some kind of booklet. It was uh, published by Patrick McCollum, and he came up with a booklet, and Raymond Bucklin endorsed it in the beginning. Oh, okay. I, now, what it was. I know Patrick uh, was was pretty involved in California. I'm not. I don't think he is right now. Um, right. Yeah. He's doing a lot of other things. Um, I've not heard of that booklet. I wouldn't mind getting a hold of it. Yeah, there's there's all kinds of good stuff like that, yeah. but to. To evaluate what's really available now, I think it's important because uh, as I age and as I trek a path similar to that of, of an incarcerated man, and I, I'm very public with my story uh, mm-hmm. of reaching your highest ideals, tapping into that magic from Doreen Valiante. Um, and I, it, for me, 2024 is that year to try to, I'm not sure where I want to go with this, but I just want to say that Witchcraft TV www.witchcrafttv.online wants to 
uh, work with pagan prisoners in what capacity, I don't know. Maybe we could uh, facilitate uh, letter writing where we read the letter over on our station. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Or, I'm going to talk to you about that because some prisons allow, um, like my DVDs are played on some kind of um, television or whatever they have. Right. Um, but not every everyone does. A lot of inmates have um, the little, not an iPad, but a little, right. yeah, and uh, can download books and things like that. So there's some things that are opening up. I'd like to talk to you further about that to see. Sure. It would be great to get them to get a visit, a visitation online and just kind of see if we can't record that it. But would. I think there might be a lot of fine tape with that. <laughs> they yeah, I know that Appalachian um, Prison Ministry, they're up in Ohio, they're able to have Zoom classes with inmates, but I don't uh, I don't see that very often. I have talked to some chaplains about it, but after COVID, you know, during COVID, a lot of chaplains just left. South Carolina doesn't even have a uh, chief chaplain anymore. They have no no leadership. And some chaplains are having to uh, take care of two prisons at once. That's, you know, it's just not a good thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy working with inmates. It, it isn't. Right. Do you ever get, do you ever get uh, the feeling that an inmate just is writing letters, you know, with ulterior motives and just. Oh yeah. I've had some. <laughs> Right. Very excited about meeting a high priestess. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm extra excited. Yeah, very extra excited. Yeah. So the, the chaplain and the warden get uh, copies of those letters. Um, I did. There was one person I wasn't sure of. I, he felt sketchy, but I checked in, in with his chaplain and he was okay. But yeah, um, actually, uh, the, the inmates that I typically work with are very... Um, honest and truthful about what they want. They want uh, to grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't, I don't have the, I don't have the bad inmates, especially when I go visit. I feel as safe in, on the, on the, um, in the chapel or even in the yard because uh, the inmates that I work with are, uh, most of them are extraordinary. I, I really like that they're trying their best to improve who they are. Um, mm -hmm. Even one who's in for life, he's doing everything he can to become a better person, even though he's never going to get out of prison. And I admire right. that. I admire anybody who finds out that what's not working for them and they, they have the courage and the persistence to change it. And that's what I find in, in, in a lot of inmates. And yes, some are just there to um, play around or whatever. But they, I, I have the when I visit, I have the authority to throw them out of the class. So if they're not doing their work, if they're just playing around, uh, then I'll talk to the chaplain because I, I don't want to waste my time. I've got all these inmates who are really trying, and I'm not going to waste my time on somebody who's not who's just playing around. So these are in-person classes. Uh, uh, yes, I used to do more. I used to go to seven uh, South Carolina prisons a month. I've had back surgery, so now I've cut that down to just two. Um, I, I do enjoy teaching in public. I do enjoy talking to the men. I, I used to go to women's prisons, but I'm not, I'm just not doing women's prisons anymore. Um, not sure mm -hmm. why, but I just, I can't, uh, I can't visit as many as I used to. Mm -hmm. So when you go inside of the prisons, are you are you casting actual working spaces there in there? Oh, yeah, we do a meditation before we start to. Is that what you're asking me to bring in um, deity energy into the space? Is that what you're talking about? Are you casting circles in the in these? No, not casting circles. Only if we're doing ritual, I don't cast circles. But I do a meditation to bring in uh, energy, positive okay. energy. Yeah. So it's more so like a study group and focusing on different what individual deities that they they, they embrace. Is that well, we talk about um, we talk about their deities, and, and not everybody's Wiccan. We have druids. We have. Um, Right. Also true. 
I even worked with an Odinist once <laughs> um, and talk about their needs. Um, I'll teach a class, but to uh, where I'm going now, the guys have been studying for so long. I don't I can't really teach them. You know, we just talk about what's going on with them spiritually. Right. So you're you, you're you're corresponding with uh, prisoners that are really adept to paganism. No, this is these are visitations. Okay. Um, I get so many. May uh, sometimes I just get a little note saying I, I need some information about Wicca. <laughs> I mean, it'll be a yeah. torn piece of paper, and I send them everything I can. Mm -hmm. So. So an inmate, an inmate is in correspondence with you and they have a, a one to three years to do a small bid, but they're fascinated with Wicca. They want to go out and they want to pursue the priesthood of Wicca. Mm -hmm. What do you tell them? I tell them that when they get out, they really need to be honest about where they've been because they're going to be people in the community who are not going to trust them, especially if they're a sex offender. Yeah. You know, they really are going to have a hard time mm -hmm. um, and they'll need to find somebody to teach them. Uh, that's a, uh, It's hard for inmates. It's hard. But um, if they want to do it, uh, I just tell them to find people to help you and to teach you and research and learn as much as you can. And uh, you're in this day and age, uh, I think initiations aren't as prevalent. Do you agree with that? I don't see them as often. Uh, so if you're going to be an elder or a priest, you have to have other people recognize your wisdom. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's precisely what initiation is, is acceptance from the tribe. So if it's acceptance from the larger community, I mean, what else you want? So, right. so exactly. I, I agree with you 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. I also agree with you 100 percent that if uh, these prisoners, you know, all are in prison for specific reasons. And if those reasons happen to be sex offenses, I will say honestly, and from the countless pagan festivals and communities that I've been to. Not a good shot. It's just not going to work out. And, and maybe that needs to be worked on and there's nobody really skilled ready to deal with those kind of people but i know that there's just not going to happen because let's face it at pagan gatherings you know children walk around freely and everybody's parent there. right right um that's very hard for sex offenders and um i, I really haven't worked that one out i there are some sex offenders that i I appreciate because they're really trying to improve, but yeah. also working specifically with the sex offenders at the, uh, at where I go, they say, if I get out, I will reoffend, yeah. and they know it. It's, there's no cure for sex offenders there. It's like an alcoholic. You will always be an alcoholic. You're just not drinking. You will always be a sex offender. You're just not offending. Mm -hmm. That's my that's how I put it. You know, everybody has their own opinion about that, but I'd like to give them a chance, but who's going to give them the chance out in the public? Mm -hmm. um, right. Lots. <laughs> when, when I told somebody that one of my favorite inmates is a sex offender, I could see the anger in her eyes. Mm -hmm. So now you, you just said that, who's going to give them a chance. Yep. And I think it's important to think about, well, they need to give their self a ch chance because it's really That's ultimately true. up to them. That's it's true. Because they're, they're the only ones that's going to unlock those doors to begin with. And then it just takes that person to see that, that can give them a little boost up, you know, I get, yeah. I, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's a hard one. It's a very hard one. Right. And, in working with, you know, prison prisoners, you know, they put, I mean, let's face it, they put the undesirables, you know, in, in those tanks, in those cans, in those big, massive, you know, penitentiaries that they're building, you know. Undesirables, but why, uh, why are they undesirable? I had one inmate told me, he said he got more scars from his mother than he ever got in a fight in prison. Mm -hmm. These people are broken. Now, right. I, I will admit that, you know, you know, serial killers and, and, and ones like that, I don't have to deal with them. 
but uh, these these guys are broken. So you go into a prison and you treat them with respect. Now, I don't know which ones are telling me the truth and not, and they could be lying to me. I don't know, but I'm going to give them a chance. Uh, I treat them with respect. They, uh, in return, respect me very much and, and are very grateful for what I can do. And there's nothing um, more wonderful than having people thanking you for the work that you put in. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that I can vouch for for prisoners is that when men and women are in jail or non-binary, to be respectful, are incarcerated, um, there's not much going on in the world and spirituality becomes heightened. You have a lot of people that are incarcerated that flock right to Christianity and all of a sudden they're Bible thumping wacko, you know, or you might have people that fall into Buddhism or it, um, Islam. And, you know, it's just whatever the appetite is for spiritual for spirituality. Mm -hmm. And when someone is incarcerated and they are intrigued by our earth based spirituality, that, that that's no exception. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, and, and there's always the big talk while you're incarcerated. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, when, when, when they get out, when I get out um, and the recidivism rates are just so high yes. um, and you, you seldom hear a success story about, um, you know, a pagan getting out of the, the penitentiaries and not falling back into the recidivism and, and in that stuff. And although you said some of these men are broken mm -hmm. and um, yeah, you know, I think on the underlying factors of addiction plays in probably 70%. Yes. I, I'm not, I don't know exactly, but it's high, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's high. Mm -hmm. so, so it's just like so many different things to, to try. <laughs> like, I guess the, the different prisoners have different um, levels of understanding of uh, spirituality. Yes. And um, I can understand why they they uh, run to a religion, because what else do they have? Now, some places have the the dog training in some places like in South Carolina, they have uh, <laughs> they work in industry like uh, mm -hmm. working with wood or whatever. And some places have craft, uh, but not all. And uh, yes, I think. And as in the religion, you're accepted and you've got a group of people around you who support you. Um, so I can understand why they do that. Do you offer any support to the prisoners you work with when, when they're released? I say yes. When If I trust them, mm -hmm. I tell them that they can contact me um, through my uh, website, email me, let me know. Uh, they can contact me through Facebook. I'm actually still, um, I'm still friends, Facebook friends with one of the inmates I worked with at the first person I worked at back 2013, I think. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned a website. What's, what's the website? What's uh, the name? It's Crow Glen Pagan Services and Glen is spelled, the goddess gave me Glen spelled this way. And I just found out that recently that it was Scottish, uh, G L E A N N, and it's Crow Glen Pagan Services. Mm -hmm. I used to do hospice work and the prison work, but not enough pagans are dying, so I just do the, the prison work. That was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, give it fifty years. I think this is a big influx. Yeah, I'm I'm getting up in my years too. So, yeah. A lot of my friends are. What about your spirituality? When did you first come to the craft? Oh, let's see. Oh, gosh. I, I think it was the early 2000s. Because I got my third in 2007. So, um, yeah, early 2000s. Or maybe late 1990s. I can't really remember. Um because I kind of slid into it uh, as with a women's group who worked with goddess and I just kind of slid into it and goddess introduced me to her. And um, then I kept going more and more into the, the Wiccan first starting off with just Dianic 
And then when I got my third, she said, I won't give you your third unless you bring the God in. So I did. <laughs> so third degree in a Dianic tradition? No, actually it was a third degree. She had, I think her, her third degree was given to her by Lord Serpent, if you've ever heard of him. Okay. Serpent Stone? Yes, Serpent Stone. Okay. Really yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, I'm familiar. So that's cool. So, so you're coming from the Serpent Stone line and you do outreach for prisoners. I think that is badass. And you are a magnificent woman. I really appreciate it. I oh, wish I would have really found you in 2000 when I was serving time. No. Oh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't do it then, but I would have been glad to help you. Yeah. But I really do want to talk to you later about ways that uh, you can help the prison population in the United Absolutely. States. Absolutely. Okay. I've, I've, uh, I always used to like pen pals, you know, just somebody to write to. Right. That's that's hard to find. Um, I had a guy in North Carolina ask me some information and he was going to be a pen pal and it didn't last two months. It's um, it's uh, it's hard to be a pen pal. That's why I don't do pen pal. I have a few inmates who I I. Um, have i i get online they can do messages to me and um but not very many i just don't have the time to do it for everybody mm -hmm. oh, right so. i i always used to like taking correspondence courses when i was incarcerated because i felt like i was in like witch school yeah and um i think let's see i'm not sure I know that um, mm -hmm. you can get online courses. Ah. Oh, there's tons of them for free online. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I don't think they're free, are they? I know well, that there's, there's online courses you can take for free. Absolutely. But I mean, they, they can't get they're online. Not accessible to all prisoners, though. Yeah. They can't get online. So that's one of the, yeah. the issues. That would have to be like a carbon. Um, you know, manuscript of the of a correspondence course, but definitely something to look into. Right. Uh, 2024 is the year for my personal agenda uh, right. to help uh, in some capacity or another the pagan prisoner. Um, I am three years on state parole and I am owner of Witchcraft TV and award winning pagan musician. Hot and damn. I'm ready to keep, I'm ready to go. All right, honey. Right, Trisha. Oh, yeah. We're going to reach out to some, um, pagan prisoners. And I think uh, the people who are already in the field and the paint working with them, um, those are the people that I want to network with. Okay. Um, I can, I can, I can hook you up. <laughs> yeah. That's, it, that sounds, that sounds great. I know that uh, there's a few others in the community that are, are interested too. Um, and I, I don't want really want it to take a slant of, you know, particular traditions, you know, trying to, you know, scope out, you know, uh, pagan prisoner talent and stuff like that, because I'm sure that stuff goes on because there is vetting and everybody wants workers and stuff like that. But for the pure spiritual aspects of helping somebody conquer recidivism. Yes. When it comes to earth based spirituality and using earth based spirituality as a crutch to conquer that recidivism, that's where I'm at. It's not for the money. It's not for the workers. It's for giving back to something that gave to us yes you know yes um, so that would be great um so what's your website one more time I just look for crow glenn g-l-e-a-n-n -N, pagan services and Amen. it talks talks about your prisoner outreach on the site it ju just a little bit it says it talks about what i do but then you can contact me and i can help you with whatever you need, if I can help you, I can't always help everybody. Mm -hmm. okay. Now I, I was scoping around YouTube for pagan prisoner outreach. Do you have YouTube videos about it on YouTube? No, I just have my DVDs um, because I did, like I said, I'm usually in the background. The DVDs were a big deal um, mm -hmm. because inmates can't always get anything that's online. So right. I knew that if they have the, the technology to at least uh, put in a DVD, then, then that's what I wanted them to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, 
I don't want to, I don't want to be a, a media star. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I definitely do. I'm a pagan musician. I want all the attention I can get. <laughs> but, but for this hour, it's not about me. It's all about your work. The, the, the yeah. Community. And the inmates helping the inmates. Yeah. And, and that's what looks like we're about to do. Right, Patricia. Sure. 2024. Mm -hmm. We're going to reach out to pagan prisoners. Um, I know firsthand where that came from and what kind of path I had to go down to conquer that recidivism forever. And we're going to give back. Thank you um, for giving back uh, wholeheartedly. And I hope to have you back on the Lone Wolf Show. Anytime. Thank you very much for having me.